All right, welcome back everybody to Altcoin Daily, where you subscribe for a video keeping you informed on the crypto market every day. My name's Austin. If you are invested in Bitcoin, big news day, a lot of news to cover. I want to put all this on your radar. If you are invested in altcoins, I have a chart that you've never seen before. Just came out. This channel's breaking it from Willy Woo. I want to clue you in and find out what this means to you as an altcoin investor. And really just a whole lot of information that I want to put on your radar today. So make sure you watch the entirety of this video. Watch till the very end just to get the most value. Like always, let's jump in and let's start with further confirmation. And I'm not a financial advisor, but further confirmation that we have bottomed. We bottomed back at the beginning of this year. And right now in 2019 and 2020, this is the time to accumulate. And you might have seen charts like this before. This one specifically reads minor capitulation, and it shows us every single time from a mining standpoint, we have entered a new bull market. So we had minor capitulation back in 2012, new bull market, minor capitulation back in 2015, new bull market, and minor capitulation at the beginning of this year, 2019. Let's dig in. After each all-time high for Bitcoin, the price of Bitcoin drops until a lot of miners aren't profitable. As the price goes down, what happens? Miners switch off their hardware, they capitulate, and the hash rate drops, at least for the short term, because, because miners are in it to make money. And they'll turn their mining rigs back on when Bitcoin becomes profitable again to mine, when the difficulty adjusts downward. And this is sort of the beauty of Bitcoin. Even if everybody decided to shut off their miners at the same time and say there was just two people left mining Bitcoin, the difficulty would adjust until more people started coming on and mining again. And what this means for you, because it's this sort of information, it's these kind of metrics that might potentially make you change your mind on Bitcoin, on cryptocurrency. Because when all-time highs happen or yearly lows happen, we don't really know until after they've happened. For example, in 2012, the yearly high for Bitcoin was dollars. In 2013, it was hundreds of dollars. In 2014, it was thousands of dollars. Bit of a corrective year. And of course, we jumped to 2017, 2018. It was tens of thousands of dollars for Bitcoin's all-time high. The question is, now that we have capitulated officially, what will be the next all-time high for Bitcoin? And just to make this chart very clear, every time the minor capitulation goes back to 100, at least historically, at least historically, that is 100% the start of a new bull market because there's less sell pressure. The miners start accumulating rather than selling. They're turning back on their miners. Something to consider, something to keep on the radar. Let's keep going. I have more charts to show you because for those of you who subscribe to the channel, uh, it's pretty obvious. And this is just my opinion, but it's pretty obvious that we could see 100K Bitcoin one day. It's pretty obvious we could see a million Bitcoin one day. We talk about it. But let's have a real discussion on altcoin season. From Willy Woo, our favorite on-chain analyst of Bitcoin, has a new chart on altcoins. After the year-long, almost two-year-long shitcoin carnage, alts may be headed into a region of support. Pay attention to these three lines. This first line, you know, this is the price of Bitcoin. Looks familiar. The second line, or the top line, as Willie Wu calls it, this is the altcoin market cap to Bitcoin's market cap ratio. So think of this as an alternative to Bitcoin dominance. This is altcoin dominance. And you can see in 2017, 2018, alts had high dominance. And of course, where we are now, alts look like they're dying. And then this bottom line is the ratio of, of the altcoin market volume compared to Bitcoin's volume on the exchanges. So what does this mean for you? Because uh, we know that alts have been looking weak this past year, but I guess the point is that we're coming up to some support, some historical support. Because since 2014, right here, the altcoins, what was this line? The altcoins have never went below uh, Bitcoin's market cap ratio. The altcoin to Bitcoin market cap ratio, they've never dropped below this line for 2014. As you can see, this line has gone up, a nice steady trend line as the crypto market grew in general. But altcoin market cap and altcoin volume compared to Bitcoin has never gone below these two trend lines since 2014 and uh, more recently, 2016, 17. For those of you that subscribe to the channel, you know we've made it very clear, myself, my brother, we're very focused on accumulating as much Bitcoin as we can 
in these golden years, this accumulation phase. But if you are itching to buy altcoins, uh, this support may be a local bottom, might be the yearly bottom for altcoins being drained. Something to keep your eye on. If hypothetically we were to see a break in this trend line for the first time in over five years, what if the alt uh, market cap compared to Bitcoins falls below this trend line? If this happens, if this is broken, I think that we're going to see a lot more altcoins capitulate and a lot more altcoins die, quite frankly. And I know altcoins dying, I know it's something that nobody wants to hear, but as smart investors on this channel, we try and talk about how to be a smart investor in the space. I'm not saying that all altcoins are gonna die. I'm saying that the, the bad ones will. Which are the bad ones? Uh, I mean, you make your own decisions. Uh, for example, me with XRP, uh, I've made it clear, I don't think XRP will reach adoption. I don't think XRP will succeed, but XRP has proven many, many people wrong. And I mean, it's, been here over five years. The rest of these altcoins aren't. So you make your own decisions on which altcoins you find value in. If you're wondering which altcoins Willy Woo finds value in, because he's been primarily a Bitcoin bull, and we usually only get Bitcoin charts and metrics. This one should be published to his site soon. At least he says he will likely add it. And if you're wondering which altcoins Willy Woo likes, he says, all alts are valued on people parking money in them. Speculation, no different than Bitcoin. Alts have no utility valuation. Zilch. Maybe Ethereum has a few bucks of utility valuation from buy demand for gas to power smart contracts, but the rest is people parking funds in them. So Willy Woo, I guess maybe he's he's one percent less than one percent bullish on maybe Ethereum has some value. But that's Willie. You do you. Make your own decisions. Let's keep going. The five most important dates for Bitcoin until 2020. So the rest of the year, this is what you should put on your radar. And again, a lot of news to cover. Stick around to the end because I'm doing a meetup later today. If you're around the LA area, myself, my brother, Crypto Wendy will be in DTLA. Come have a beer with us. But uh, I'll clue you guys in at the end. The five most important dates for Bitcoin until 2020. First one to put on your radar, and this one just happened yesterday. But the New York attorney, it says the 22nd, but they ruled early. The New York attorney general's injunction against Bitfinex was set to expire. They ruled on it. And the New York attorney general denied Bitfinex's motion to drop all charges. So they're continuing the discussion Tether, uh, Bitfinex has to turn over all the documents uh, that the New York court wants them to, to deem if Bitfinex is doing illegal things, like printing as much Tether as they could possibly want. Anyway, the only thing that was decided on is the case goes on. Bitfinex is forced to produce more documents, respond. When this happened, the market didn't really respond. Looks like we're dropping at the present though. Let's check back at the end of this video, see where Bitcoin is. But in general, I think this could be bullish long-term for Bitcoin, getting some of these potential bad actors, potentially, we'll see out of the space, and at least proving once and for all, is Tether a fully audited, compliant stablecoin, or isn't it? I'm getting ahead of ourselves. As we know more information on, on this, I'll keep you updated. The second date to keep on your radar is backed. They have been cleared. They will be launching on September 23rd. Huge green flag. This is gonna start the trickle of new money. It's an on-ramp. It's a trusted source for custody for institutional money. Uh, that was September. In October 13th, the SEC will make their final decision on the Bitwise Bitcoin ETF. And coming in uh, within that same week, October 18th, the SEC to rule on whether the VanEck SolidX ETF passes. And the last date I want to put on your radar, also October, the submission for the final rehabilitation plans for Mt. Gox. As you know, Mt. Gox is an exchange back in the day that got, that got hacked, lost a lot of people, a lot of Bitcoin. And on October 28th, their main guy will have to submit a plan detailing the timing and method of repaying roughly 2,400 creditors who were affected by the hack back in 2011. If you weren't part of that hack, just in general, this is just a positive sentiment for the market. Ultimately, a win for the crypto community. But all these dates combined together could be that perfect storm for Bitcoin for crypto. Next piece of news, are you black? 
Are you an American? Well, Max Kaiser calls Bitcoin the key to freedom for black Americans. <laughs> Let's check this out. Max Kaiser, co-host of the Kaiser Report. Uh, Max Kaiser is a Bitcoin bull, been in the space a very long time. He hosts a show. He says that he believes Bitcoin can battle white supremacy and the subjugation of black people in America who make up a disproportionate number of the prison population. Just hear Max out. Just hear Max out. Responding to a report by NPR involving mass incarceration and I guess the races that make up, make up that, Max responded, Bitcoin represents the single greatest opportunity ever for blacks in America to emancipate themselves from the entrenched white supremacists who have always run the country. Now, we're not going to get too deep. Max Kaiser is definitely a character. Um, but I mean, come on, we all know this. Bitcoin represents freedom, not just for black people, for all people. I like it. Uh, the all people aspect of this is something I can get behind. But... Let's keep going. Guys, that was the video for today. If you've gotten any value, give it a like, give it a subscribe. We drop a video every single day. You do not want to miss one. But that being said, if you're in the LA area, and maybe I should have announced this, uh, giving you guys a couple days, but you know what? In this situation, don't go out of your way. We only want the locals. If you'll be around tonight, Thursday from 7 to 9 p.m. at DTLA Angel City Brewery, Crypto Wendy is doing a little meetup, and they invite. she invited us. And I guess this is Lolly's one-year anniversary. There will be free food, cake, and, a, and two drinks free per person. I will be taking advantage of that. But, uh, you know, Aaron and I plan to bring our camera and our microphone, do little man-on-the-street interviews like we did. And I'm not going to show you, but we did them, you know, with Ivan on Tech and BitBoy Crypto and all those guys uh, at the Toronto event. So if you're there, uh, it should be a fun time. Anyways, that's the video for today. My name's Austin. See you tomorrow.